That woman gets on my nerves. Too stuck up to buy from us nowadays. Oh, so you managed to get here at last, aren't you? Morning, John. Late as usual, of course. Our appointment was for 11.30, and now it's practically midday. I'm sorry, have you been waiting long? No, I've just arrived myself, as you saw. In that case, I don't feel so bad if you've only just- It's different with me. I don't like waiting. I've no time to waste. And as you're never on time, I come late on purpose, at a time when I presume you'll be there. You're right, quite right, but- Now don't try to pretend you're ever on time. Of course not, I wouldn't say that. There you are, you see. What are you drinking? You mean to say you have a thirst, even at this time in the morning? You are in a bad way, my friend. In a bad way, you think so? I'm not blind, you know. You're dropping with fatigue. You've gone without your sleep again. You yawn all the time. You're dead tired. My head does feel a bit thick. And what's happened to your tie? You're right. That's funny. Whatever could I have done with it? Here, put this one on. Oh, thank you. That's kind. Your hair is all over the place. Here, here's a comb. Oh, thank you. You haven't even shaved. Just take a look at yourself. You always look so immaculate. Your clothes are all crumpled. They're a disgrace. Your shirt is downright filthy. And your shoes? Your shoes haven't been touched. What a mess you're in. And take a look at your shoulders. What's the matter with my shoulders? Come on, turn around. Turn around. You've been leaning against some wall. No, I haven't got a brush with me. Make my pockets bulge. Heavens, where did you get all that from? I don't remember. It's a positive disgrace. I feel ashamed to be your friend. You're very hard on me. I have every reason to be. Listen, John, there are so few distractions in this town, I get so bored. I'm not made for the work I'm doing. Every day at the office, eight hours a day, and only three weeks of vacation a year. When a Saturday night comes round, I feel exhausted. So you know how it is, just to relax. Good morning, gentlemen. Can I get you something to drink? My dear man, everyone has to work. I spend eight hours a day in the office, just like you. And I only get three weeks off a year. But still, you don't catch me. Willpower, my good man. But everybody hasn't got as much willpower as that. I just can't get used to it. I can't get used to life. Everyone has to get used to it. Or do you consider yourself some superior being? I don't pretend to be. I'm just as good as you are. I think with all due modesty, I may say I'm better. The superior man is the man who fulfills his duty. What duty? His duty. His duty as an employee, for example. Oh, yes, his duty as an employee. What's going on? Whatever is it? Whatever is it? Oh, rhinoceros! Oh, rhinoceros! Oh, rhinoceros! Quick, come and look, it's rhinoceros! It's looked as if it was a rhinoceros. It made plenty of dust. Oh, well, of all things, oh, it gave me such a scare. Your basket and all your things. Would you like me to pick up your things? Oh, yes, thank you. How very kind. Oh, it gave me such a scare. Fear is an irrational thing. It must yield to reason. Look, it's already out of sight. My friend is a logician. What did you oh, think of that? Very happy that you don't hurt by our feet from somebody else. No, I can see that. I still love First time I've seen that. What do you what think, did you think of that? It's not spiteful, is it? Oh, oh, oh it wouldn't hurt It wouldn't pass like a rocket. What happened to my wine? I've got plenty more. Well, Baron Jay, what did you think of Don't hang about. Look after these gentlemen. Oh, what that? did I think of what? I've got oh, some first class wine. What are you drinking? Cognac. Oh, two cognac. Thank you. Come very kind. Oh, please don't mention it. It's a pleasure. Replace them in an orderly fashion. Well, what did you think of it? Well, nothing. It made a lot of dust. That's some good leaks as well. Kid, kid, it's a hundred francs a liter. Oh, thank you. Such a pleasure to come across the old French courtesy. Not with the young people nowadays. You no, know, you should buy from us. You wouldn't even have to cross the street, and you wouldn't run the risk of these accidents. But you must admit, it's extraordinary. It's a great pleasure to meet you, madame. Uh, thank you very much for holding my cat. Would you like me to accompany you part of the way? Uh, no, my husband's waiting for me. But perhaps some other time. I uh, sincerely hope so, madame. Uh, so do I. The dust is settled. Delightful creature. A rhinoceros. I can't get over it. Charming, isn't she? I'm going to explain to you what a syllogism is. 
Ah, yes. A syllogism. I can't get over it. It's unthinkable. A syllogism consists of a main proposition, a secondary one, and a conclusion. Well, what conclusion? I just can't get over it. Yes, I can see you can't. Well, it was a rhinoceros. All right, so it was a rhinoceros. It's miles away by now. Miles away. But you must see it's fantastic. A rhinoceros loose in the town, and you don't bat an eyelid? It shouldn't be allowed. Uh, Put yeah. your hand over your mouth. It shouldn't be allowed. It's ridiculous. But don't worry, it won't get us here. We ought to protest the town council. What's the council there for? Excuse me, perhaps it escaped from the zoo. You're daydreaming. But I'm wide awake. Awake or asleep, it's the same thing. But there is some difference. That's not the point. But you just said being awake and being asleep were the same thing. You didn't understand. There's no difference between dreaming awake and dreaming asleep. I do dream. Life is a dream. You're certainly dreaming when you say the rhinoceros escaped from the zoo. I only said perhaps. Because there's been no zoo in our town since all the animals died in the plague. Ages ago. Then perhaps it came from the circus. What circus are you talking about? I don't know. Some traveling circus? You know perfectly well how the council banned all traveling performers in the district. There haven't been any since we were children. In that case, maybe it's been hiding ever since in the surrounding swamps. The surrounding swamps? The surrounding swamps? My friend, you live in a haze. That's very true. It seems to come from my stomach. It's clouding your brain. Where do you know of any surrounding swamps? Our district is known as Little Castile because the land is so arid. How do I know that? Perhaps it's been hiding under a rock, or maybe it's been nesting on some withered branch. If you think you're being witty, you're very much mistaken. You're just being a bore with, with your stupid paradoxes. You're incapable of talking seriously. Today, yes. Today is the same as any other day. It's not quite as much. Your witticisms are not very inspired. I wasn't trying. I can't bear people to try and make fun of me. I, but John, I would never allow myself to. My dear Baron J, you are allowing yourself. Oh, no, I would never allow myself to. Yes, you would. You've just done so. But how could you possibly think? I think what is true. I, but I assure you that you are making fun of me. You really can be obstinate sometimes. And now you're calling me a mule into the bargain. Even you must see how insulting you're being. It would never have entered my mind. You have no mind. All the more reason why it would never have entered it. <laughs> there are certain things which enter the minds of even those who don't have them. That's impossible. And why, pray, is it impossible? Because it's impossible. Then kindly explain to me why it's impossible. As you seem to imagine, you can explain everything. I don't imagine anything of the kind. Then why do you act as if you do? And why, I repeat, are you being so insulting? I I'm not insulting you. Far from it. You know what tremendous respect I have for you. In that case, why do you contradict me? Making it out that it's not dangerous to let a rhinoceros go racing about in the middle of the town, particularly on a Sunday morning. When the streets are full of children, and adults too. A lot of them are in church, they don't run any risk. If you allow me to finish, and at the market time too. I, I never said it wasn't dangerous to let the rhinoceros go racing about the town. I simply said I personally never considered the danger. It had never crossed my mind. You never consider anything. All right, I agree. A rhinoceros roaming about is not a good thing. It shouldn't be allowed. Yes, it, it shouldn't be allowed. It's ridiculous, but it's no reason for you and me to quarrel. Why go on at me just because some wretched prisodactyl happens to pass by? A stupid quadruped not worth talking about, and ferocious into the bargain, and which has already disappeared, which doesn't exist any longer. Let's talk about something else. John, please, there are plenty of other topics for conversation. To you. Put that glass back on the table. You're not to drink it. There's no point in leaving it for the proprietor. Put it down, I tell you. Very well. Thank you. Oh, th there's Daisy! Watch out! How clumsy you are! That's Daisy. I don't want her to see me in the state. Your behavior's unforgivable. Absolutely unforgivable. Why are you afraid of that girl? Please be quiet. She doesn't look an unpleasant person. I must apologize once more. You for... see what comes of drinking. You can no longer control your movements. You know strength left in your hands. You're besotted. You're digging your own grave, my friend. You're destroying yourself. I'm frightened. Friend of what? I don't know exactly. It's an anguish difficult to describe. I feel out of place in life, among people. You're just trying to escape from yourself. I I'm conscious of my body all the time, as if it were made of lead, or as if it were carrying another man around on my back. I 
can't seem to get used to life. I don't even know if I am me. That's being fanciful. Look at me, Baron J. I weigh more than you do, and yet I feel light. Light as a Look out! Oh. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, no harm done. No harm no, done. No, no harm done. No, no harm done. Uh, no, no harm done. You certainly are strong. Yes, I'm strong. I'm strong for several reasons. In the first place, I'm strong because I'm naturally strong. And secondly, I'm strong because I have moral strength. Here is an example of a syllogism. All cats have four paws. Isidore and Frico both have four paws. Therefore, Isidore and Frico are cats. Well, my dog has got four paws. Then it's a cat. <laughs> I've barely got the strength to go on living. Maybe I don't even want to. So then, logically speaking, my dog must be a cat. Logic has just revealed the fact to us. Solitude seems to oppress me, and so does the company of other people. You contradict yourself. What oppresses you, solitude or the company of others? You consider yourself a thinker, and yet you're devoid of logic. Logic is a very beautiful thing. As long as it is not abused, life is an abnormal business. On the contrary, nothing could be more natural. And the proof is that people go on living. There are more dead people than living, and their numbers are increasing. The living are getting rarer. The dead don't exist. There's no getting away from that. And yet you're oppressed by them too? How can you be oppressed by something that doesn't exist? I sometimes wonder if I exist myself. You don't exist, my dear Berenger, because you don't think. Start thinking, and then you will. Another syllogism. All cats die, Socrates is dead. Therefore, Socrates is a cat. And he's got four paws. That's true. I've got a cat named Socrates. There you are, you see? You're just fooling yourself, my dear chap. You say that life doesn't interest you, and yet there's someone who does. Who? Your little friend from the office who just went past. You're very fond of her. So Socrates was a cat, was he? Logic has just revealed the fact to us. You didn't want her to see you in your present state. Let's get back to our cat. I'm all ears. In any case, I think she's already got her eye on someone. Oh, who? Someone in the firm. I can't hope to compete with him. The cat Isidore has four paws. How do you know? Well, it's stated in the hypothesis. The chief thinks very highly of him, whereas I have no future, I have no qualifications, I don't stand a chance. Ah, in the hypothesis. So you're giving up just like that? Frico also has four paws. So how many paws have Frico and Isidore? Well, separately or together. What else can I do? Separately or together, it all depends. Life is a struggle. It's cowardly not to put up a fight. <clears throat> what can I do? I have nothing to put up a fight with. Then find yourself some weapons, my friend. Eight. Eight paws. Logic involves mental arithmetic, you see. It certainly has many aspects. Where can I find the weapons? There are no limits to logic. Within yourself, through your own will. What weapons? I'm going to show you. The weapons of patience and culture. The weapons of the mind. Turn yourself into a keen and brilliant intellect. Get yourself up to the mark. How do I get myself up to the mark? If I take two paws away from these cats, how many paws will each have left? Well, that's not so easy. It's not so easy. On the contrary, it's simple. It may be simple for you, but not for me. It may be simple for you, but not for me. Come on, exercise your mind. Concentrate. Come on, exercise your will. Concentrate. I don't see how. I really don't see how. You have to be told everything. You have to be told everything. Come, take a sheet of paper and count it. If I take two of the eight paws away from the two cats, how many paws are left to each cat? Just a moment. This is what you must do. Dress yourself properly. Shave every day. Put on a clean shirt. The laundry's so expensive. Wear a hat. A tie like this. A well-cut coat. Shoes well polished. There are several possible solutions. Tell me. Then what do I do? Tell me. I'm listening. I'm listening. You're a timid creature, but not without talent. I've got talent, me. So use it. Put yourself in the picture. Keep abreast of the cultural and literary events of the times. One possibility is one cat could have four paws and the other two. I get so little spare time. You're not without talent. You just needed to exercise it. Then take advantage of what free time you do have. Don't just let yourself drift. I never had the time. 
I was an official, you know. One can always find time to learn. One can always find time. It's too late now. Uh, it's a bit late in the day for me. It's never too late. It's never too late. Look, you spend eight hours a day in the office like me and everyone else, but not on Sundays, nor in the evenings, nor for three weeks in the summer. That's quite sufficient. With a little method. Well, what about the other solutions? Come on, use a little method. A little method. Look, instead of feeling sick and tired all the time, isn't it better to be fresh and eager, even at work? And you can spend your free time constructively. How do you mean? By visiting museums, reading literary periodicals, going to lectures. That'll solve your troubles. It'll cultivate your mind. In four weeks, you'll be a cultured man. You're right. There could be one cat with five paws. You see? You even think so yourself. And one cat with one paw, but will they still be cats then? Well, <laughs> why not? Go see an interesting play. Do you know anything about the avant-garde theater there's so much talk about? Have you seen Ionesco's plays? Unfortunately, no. I've only heard people talk about them. By taking two of the eight paws away from the two cats. There's one play now. Take advantage of it. We could have one cat with six paws. It would be an excellent initiation into the artistic life of our times. We could have one cat with no paws at all. You're right. Perfectly right. I'm going to put myself into the picture like you said. In that case, one of the cats would be specially privileged. I will. I promise you. You promise yourself. That's the main thing. And one underprivileged cat deprived of all paws. <laughs> okay. I will cultivate my mind. I feel better already. You see? That would be unjust, and therefore not logical. This afternoon, I'll go to the museum, and I'll book two seats for the theater this evening. Oh, will you come with me? You must persevere. I sincerely hope you'll keep up on your good resolutions. Not logical. But I will, I promise you. But will you come with me to the museum this afternoon? Because logic means justice. I have to take a rest this afternoon. It's in my program for the day. I get it. Justice. Uh, but will you come with me to the theater this evening? No, not this evening. Lo justice is one more aspect of logic. I sincerely hope you'll keep up on your good resolutions. But this evening, I have to meet some friends for a drink. Your mind is getting clearer. For a drink? What's more, a cat with no paws at all. I promised I'd go. I always keep my word. It won't be able to run fast enough to catch any mice. Uh, now it's you that's setting me a bad example. You're going drinking. But you're already making progress in logic. What? Me? It's not the same thing as with you. With you, you're... It's not the same thing at all. Why isn't it the same thing? Because I don't have a problem. Even with no pause, the cat must catch mice. That's in its nature. How do you mean? What's in the cat's nature? Because there's moderation in all things. I'm a moderate person, unlike you. What'd you say? What did you say? I said that! I said that! Whatever's What's happening? going on? Oh, oh my right not sir! Oh, my right not sir! Right not in the opposite direction! What is it? Oh, oh right not sir! Oh, 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 right not sir! is rushing full tilt on the opposite pavement! Oh, right not sir! Oh, right not sir! Right not sir! It's rushing straight ahead, rushing up against the sharp windows! Oh, oh right not sir! Oh, Daisy! Oh, all things! Oh, all things! Good morning, Miss Daisy. You must excuse me. I haven't had a chance to shave. Poor little thing. That's going too far. That's going too far. Oh, my poor little kitty. Oh, my poor little cat. Oh. What can you do, dear lady? Cats are only mortal. What do you expect, madam? All cats are mortal. One must accept that. Throw it in the dustbin. You owe me a thousand francs. Think of his money. Don't upset yourself, dear ladies. It's very upsetting, a thing like that. It's hard to get over a thing like that. Oh, my poor little cat. Oh, my poor little cat. Yes, it's very upsetting, a thing like that. Sit down here, dear lady. Well, what do you think of that? Well, what do you think of that? What do you think of that? A glass of wine for the lady. Sit down here, dear lady. Poor woman. Better give her a brandy. A brandy! This gentleman is saying. One brandy, right away. No, I don't want any. I don't want any. 
<laughs> no, it went past my shop a little while ago. It wasn't the same one. But I could have. Yes, it yeah. was. It was the same one. Did it go past twice then? It went so fast. I think it was the same one. No, it wasn't the same rhinoceros. The one that went past first had two horns on its nose. It was an Asiatic rhinoceros. This one only had one. It was an African rhinoceros. Here's a drop of brandy to pull you together. No. Uh, you're talking nonsense. How could you possibly tell about its horns? The animal flashed past at such a speed we hardly even saw it. Make her drink it. You had no time to count its horns. Go on, it will do you good. Just a sip, dear lady. Be brave. And what's more, it was traveling in a cloud of dust. There you Make see. her drink it. There you see. There you see. I don't have to grope my way through a fog. I can calculate quickly. My mind is clear. Are you better now? But, but it had its head thrust down. <laughs> Isn't that better? Isn't that better? Precisely. One could see all the better. My poor little cat. <laughs> Utter nonsense. I have another cat you can have. What? <laughs> you dare to accuse me of talking nonsense. No, I'll never have another. <laughs> Absolute blithering nonsense. You have to accept these things. I've never talked nonsense in my life. Try and be philosophic about it. <laughs> You're just a pretentious show off. Now, gentlemen, and what's more, a pedant who's not certain of this fact. Because in the first place, it's the Asiatic rhinoceros with only one horn on its nose, and it's the African with two. You're wrong! It's the other way about! Do you want to bet? So Wait a minute, bet! Don't excite yourself, oh, Mr. Baron J. I'm not betting with you. If anyone's got two horns, it's you, you Asiatic Mongol! Oh. Nonsense, it's just a bet. We don't want any scenes here. I've got no horns and I never will have. Now look, what kind has one horn? You're a tradesman, you should know. Yes, you should know. Oh, yes you have. <laughs> tradesmen can't be expected to know everything. And I'm not Asiatic either. And in any case, Asiatics are people the same as everyone else. Yes, Asiatics are people the same as we are. That's true. Nobody's asking your opinion. Hey, she's right, they're people the same as we are. Oh, I had him since he was a little kitten. They're yellow! <laughs> Goodbye, gentlemen. You, I will not deign to include. Oh, he was devoted to us. Now wait oh. just a minute, Mr. Jean, and you too, Mr. Berenger. I once had some Asiat I once had some friends who were Asiatics, but perhaps they weren't real ones. I know two real ones. I had an Asiatic friend once. Oh, he was so gentle, just like one of us. They're yellow, I tell you, bright yellow! Whatever they are, you're bright red. This is getting serious. Oh, he was so clean. He always used his tray. If that's how you feel, it's the last time you'll see me. I'm not wasting my time with a fool like you. Oh, he always made himself understood. There are white Asiatics as well, and black and blue, and even some like us. You are an idiot! Oh! I'm not going to stand for that. Oh! And he could almost talk. In fact, he did. Oh. You shouldn't have made him angry. It wasn't my fault. Go and get a coffin for the poor thing. We can have a little funeral. I think you're right. It's the Asiatic rhinoceros with two horns and the African with one. But he was saying the opposite. You were both wrong. Even so, you were right. Come with me. We're going to place one in a box. No! Never! If you don't mind my saying so, I think Mr. Jean was right. Come on, you must be reasonable. Would you like me to come with you? No. The Asiatic rhinoceros has one horn, and the African has two, and vice versa. You always have to be different from everybody else. I think your husband's right. It's the Asiatic with one horn, and the African with two, perhaps, and vice versa. Perhaps it's the other with one, with, perhaps it's the other with one, and the other with two. He's always making fantastic statements, always trying to dazzle people with his knowledge. He'll never admit he's wrong. Have you any proof? Proof of what? Of the statement he made just now which caused an unfortunate row with your friend. Yes, have you any proof? How do you know that one of the two rhinoceros has one horn and the other two? And which is which? He doesn't know any more than we do. Well, in the first place, we don't know that there were two. I myself believe there was only one. Well, let's say there were two. Does the single horned horn come from Asia? No, it's the one from Africa with two, I think. Which is two horns? It's not the one from Africa. It's not easy to agree on this. But the problem must be cleared up. Excuse me, gentlemen, for interrupting, but that is not the question. Allow me to introduce myself. Oh, he's a logician. A logician? Oh, a logician, is he? My friend, the logician. Very happy to meet you. Professional logician, my card. It's a great honor. A great honor for us all. So nice to meet you. 
Would you mind then telling us, sir, if the African rhinoceros is single horned? Or bicorn? And is the Asiatic rhinoceros bicorn? Or unicorn? Exactly! That is not the question. Let me make myself but that's clear. That's still what we want to find out. Kindly allow me to speak. Gentlemen, let him speak. Give him a chance to speak. We're listening, sir. I'm addressing you in particular, and everyone else here as well. Us as well. You see, you have gotten away from the argument that instigated the debate. In the first place, you were arguing whether or not the rhinoceros which passed by just now was the same that passed by earlier, or whether it was another. That is the question to decide. Uh, yes, but how? Yes, how? Thus. You may have seen on two occasions a single rhinoceros bearing a single horn. On two occasions a single rhinoceros bearing a single horn. Or you may have seen on two occasions a single rhinoceros with two horns. A single rhinoceros with two horns on two occasions. Exactly! Or again, you may have seen one rhinoceros with one horn and then followed by another, also with a single horn. <laughs> or again, you may have seen an initial rhinoceros with two horns followed by a second, also with two horns. That's true. Now, if you had seen... If we'd seen. Yes, if we'd seen. If on the first occasion you had seen a rhinoceros with two horns... With two horns. And on the second occasion a rhinoceros with one horn... With one horn. That wouldn't be conclusive either. Even that wouldn't be conclusive. Why not? I don't understand this at all. Shoo shoo. For it is possible that since its first appearance, the rhinoceros may have lost one of its horns, and that the first and second transit were still made by a single beast. I see, but... Don't interrupt! It may also be that you saw two rhinoceroses, each initially with two horns, and each of which had lost a horn. That is possible. Yes, that is possible. Why not? Yes, but many... Don't interrupt! Now, if you could prove that on the first occasion you had seen a rhinoceros with one horn, either Asiatic or African... Asiatic or African... And on the second occasion a rhinoceros with, with two horns... One with two... No matter whether African or Asiatic... African or Asiatic... We could then conclude that we were dealing with two different rhinoceroses. For it is hardly likely that a second horn could grow enough to be sufficiently visible on the nose of a rhinoceros in the space of a few minutes. It's hardly likely. That would imply one rhinoceros, either Asiatic or African. Asiatic or African. And a second, either African or Asiatic. African or Asiatic. Uh, yeah. For good logic cannot entertain the possibility the same creature be born in two different places at the same time, or even successively, which was to be proved. That seems clear enough, but it doesn't answer the question. Well, obviously, my good sir, it doesn't answer the question. But now, the question is correctly posed. It's quite logical. Quite logical. Good day, gentlemen. Goodbye, gentlemen. I don't. Well, it may be logical. It may be logical. But are we going to stand for our cats being run down by one horned rhinoceros or two? Whether they're African or Asiatic? You're absolutely right. We are not standing for our cats being run down by rhinoceroses or anything else. We're not standing for it! Are you coming in? The customers will be here any minute. No, we're not going to stand for it! I never should have quarreled with John. I should have gotten to such a rage. I feel too upset to go to the museum. I'll cultivate my mind.
just before lunchtime in the church square of our town, a cat was trampled to death by a pachyderm. It wasn't exactly in the church square. That's all it says. No other details. Well, that's clear enough. I never believe journalists. They're all liars. I don't need them to tell me what to think. I believe what I see with my own eyes. Speaking as a former teacher, I like things to be precise, scientifically valid. I've got a methodical mind. What has a methodical mind got to do with it? I think it's stated very precisely, Mr. Bogar. You called that precise? And what, pray, does it mean by a pachyderm? What does the editor of a dead cat's column understand by a pachyderm? And what does he mean by a cat? Everybody knows what a cat is. Does it concern a male cat or a female? What breed is it? And what color? The color problem is something I feel very strongly about. I hate it. What has the color bar to do with it, Mr. Botar? It's quite beside the point. Please forgive me, Miss Papillon. You cannot deny that the color problem is one of the great stumbling blocks of our time. I know that. We all know that. But that has nothing to do with it. It's not an issue to be dismissed lightly, Mr. Dar. The course of history has shown that racial prejudice... I tell you, it doesn't enter into it. I'm not so sure. The color bar is not the issue at stake here. One should never miss an occasion to denounce it. But we already told you that none of us agree with it. You're just trying to obscure the issue. It is simply a matter of a cat being run over by a pachyderm. In this case, the rhinoceros. I'm a northerner myself. Southerners have just got too much imagination. Perhaps it was merely a flea got run over by a mouse. People make mountains out of molehills. Let us try and get things clear. Did you yourself, with your own eyes, see a rhinoceros strolling through the streets of the town? It wasn't strolling. It was running. No, I didn't see it personally. But a lot of very reliable people did. It's obvious they were just making it up. You put too much trust in these journalists. They don't care what they invent to sell their wretched papers and to please the bosses they serve. And you mean to tell me that they've taken you in? You, a qualified woman of law? Forgive me for laughing. But I saw it. I actually saw it. I take my oath on it. Get away with you. And I thought you were a sensible girl. Mr. Botar. I can see straight, and I wasn't the only person who saw it. A lot of other people did too. They were probably watching something else. A few idlers with nothing else to do, work shy loafers. It happened yesterday, Sunday. I work Sundays as well. I've got no time for priests who do their utmost to get you to church just to prevent you from working and earning your daily bed by the sweat of your brow. Oh! I didn't mean to be offensive, Miss Papillon. The fact that I despise religion doesn't mean that I don't esteem it highly. <laughs> In any case, do you know what a rhinoceros even looks like? It's a very big and ugly animal. And you pride yourself on your precise thinking. <clears throat> the rhinoceros, my dear young There's lady. no need to start a lecture here. We are not in school. That's a pity. Well, it's gone nine. Miss Daisy, who made the time sheets? Too bad about the latecomers. I campaign against ignorance wherever I find oh, it. Oh, Miss Daisy, I'm not late, am I? In palace or in humble hut. Quick, sign the time sheet. Oh, no matter you. where, even in printing offices. Mr. Botar, I consider you have gone too far. Are you suggesting that Ms. Dudar, my colleague and yours, a first-class employee and law graduate, is ignorant? I wouldn't go so far as to say that. But the teaching you get at these private universities isn't quite up to what you get at the 
ordinary schools. What about that time sheet? Uh, good morning, Ms. Papillon. There's no clear thinking at the universities. Oh, come now! I'm sorry, I was almost late. Uh, good morning, Dudar. Good morning, Botar. Well, Baron Jay, did you see the rhinoceros by any chance? All you get at the universities are feet intellectuals with no practical knowledge of life. Rubbish! Oh, yes, I saw it all right. Oh, look at that, Mr. Botar. I'm not crazy after all. Oh. Mr. Berenger says that out of chivalry. He's a very chivalrous man, even if he doesn't look it. What is chivalrous about saying you've seen a rhinoceros? A lot. When it's said to bolster up a fantastic statement by Miss Daisy. Everybody is chivalrous to Miss Daisy. It's very understandable. Don't twist the facts, Botar. Mr. Berenger took no part in the argument. He's only just arrived. Uh, but you did see it, didn't you? We both did. Perhaps Mr. Berenger thought he saw a rhinoceros. He's got such a vivid imagination. Anything's possible with him. I wasn't alone when I saw the rhinoceros, or maybe there were two. He doesn't even know how many he saw. I was with my friend John, and other people were there too. I don't think you know what you're talking about. It was a unicorn rhinoceros. Oh, they're in league, the two of them, to have a song. I rather think it had two horns from what I've heard. You better make up your minds. Is that the two people? Time's getting on. Did you see one rhinoceros, Mr. Berenger? Or two rhinoceroses? Well, it's hard to say. You don't know. Miss Daisy saw one. Unicorn rhinoceros. <laughs> what about your rhinoceros, Mr. Baron J? If indeed there was one, did it have one horn or two? Exactly, that's the whole problem. It's all very dubious. <laughs> I don't mean to be offensive, but I don't believe a word of it. No rhinoceros has ever been seen in this country. There is a first time for everything. It has never been seen. Except in school book illustrations. Your rhinoceros is a flower of some journalist's imagination. That's very true. Flower of the imagination? Your rhinoceros is a myth. A myth? People, I think it's high time we started to work. A myth like flying saucers. Oh, but nevertheless, the cat was trampled to death. That you can't deny. I was a witness to that. In yeah. front of witnesses. Yes, and what a witness. Gentlemen, ladies. An example of collective psychosis, Miss Dudar. Just like religion. The opiate of the people. Well, I believe flying saucers exist. That is enough. There's been enough of gossip. Rhinoceros or no rhinoceros, saucers or no saucers, work must go on. You are not paid to waste your time arguing about animals. Real or imaginary? Imaginary. Real, very real. People, we are in working hours. I am putting end to this futile discussion. Very well, Miss Papillon. You are the chief. Your wishes are our commands. Get on it, people. I do not want to be forced to make a deduction from your salaries. Ms. Dudar, how is your report on the alcoholic repression law coming along? I'm just finishing off, ma'am. Then do so. It's urgent. And Botar and Baron Jay, have you finished correcting the proofs for the wine trade control regulations? Not yet, Miss Papillon, but they're well on their way. Then finish off the corrections together. The printers are waiting. And Miss Daisy, bring the letters by my office for signature. Hurry up and get them typed. Very good, Chief. I shall see you all shortly. Laws relating to the control of proprietary wine produce. Control with one L. Proprietary with one P. Proprietary. <laughs> the controlled wines of the Bordeaux region, the lower sections of the upper slopes. I haven't got that you skipped a line. I'll start again. The wine control. Please don't read so loud. I can't concentrate with you shouting at the tops of your voices. <laughs> All a hoax. What's all a hoax? You, this rhinoceros business, of course. You've been making up this propaganda to get these rumors started. What propaganda? No question of propaganda. Do I have to tell you? I bet. I saw it. I actually saw it. You make me laugh. 
Propaganda? Propaganda for what? Oh, don't make out you're so innocent. You know more about this than I do. At any rate, Mr. Botar, I'm not in the pay of any furtive undergrad. Oh, that's an insult. I won't stand for that. Now, it's now. an insult. Ahem. Is Mr. Book not in today? No, he isn't. Just when I needed him, did he let anyone know he was ill or couldn't come in? He didn't say anything to me. If this goes on, I shall fire him. It's not the first time. Up until now, I haven't said anything, but this will not go on. Does anyone have the key to his drawer? Oh, here's Mrs. Book. Oh, morning, Mrs. Book. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mrs. Putnam. Well, where's your husband? What's happened to him? Is it too much for him to come in anymore? Please excuse him. My husband, I mean. He, he went to visit his family for the weekend. He has a touch of flu. Oh, he's got a touch of flu, has he? That's what he said in the telegram. He, he hopes to be back on Wednesday. Can I have a glass of water and sit down a moment? Give us some water. Right away, Chief. It's a great nuisance your husband couldn't come in, but it's no reason for you to go to pieces. It's, it's not, it's, well, I was chased here all the way from my home by a rhinoceros. How many horns did it have? Oh, don't make me laugh. <laughs> Give her a chance to speak. It's right down there. Down by the entrance. It seems to want to go upstairs. Oh, my. What's that? Keep going. Down there. I can't see a thing. It's an illusion. <laughs> I'm coming. You're the rhinoceros expert. Take a good book. I'm no rhinoceros expert. What keeps on going round and round? Oh, what? What? Seems to be looking for something. Oh. Can you see it now? Yes, yes, I can see it. Oh, perhaps we're all just seeing things, Mr. Bear Kotar. You included. I never see things. Something is definitely down there. Well, what do you mean, something? It's obviously a rhinoceros. It's got two horns. It's an African rhinoceros. Or Asiatic rather. I don't know if the African rhinoceros has one horn or two. It's demolished the staircase. And a good thing too, when you think how long I've been asking the management to install some steps in place of that worm meat old staircase. I had sent your report a week ago, Chief. It was bound to happen. I knew that. I could see it coming, and I was right. Always. <laughs> now look, are our two horns the characteristic? Oh, it keeps on going around. You're very well informed. Don't you think the ones with two horns What are you are... rambling on about, Baron Jay? You're a bit under the weather. How can it be possible in a civilized country? But does it exist or not? It's all an infamous plot. It's your fault. Why mine rather than yours? Mine? Why is it always the little people who get the blame? If I had a mine... Now, now, Mr. Bogart, this is no time to quarrel. We're in a fine mess with no staircase. It's all the management's fault. I just want to know how we're going to get out of here. We're going to fly down. What do you think? Oh my god, it can't be true! What's the matter? Oh, it's my husband! Oh, my poor wolf! What's happening to you? Are you positive? I recognize him! I recognize him! Well, that's the last straw. This time he's fired for good. <laughs> Get out of here through the window. I know her. It's too high! 
perhaps we ought to get the firemen and have them revive us. Miss Daisy, go to my office and call the firemen. I can't desert him. I can't desert him now. If you want to divorce him, you'd be perfectly justified. No. You would be the injured party. No, this is not the moment for that. I won't abandon my husband in such a state. You're a good woman. But what are you going to do? What's going on? I can't leave him. I can't leave him now. Chief? Oh, I'm coming, my darling. I'm coming. What's she trying to do? She's going to go. They can't fool me. I'll expose the purposes behind this whole infamous plot. I'll unmask the perpetrator. What's the, who would want to... You're avoiding the question, Mr. Botar. Let's have no evasion. <laughs> Evading? What? Me? Just now, you accused us of suffering from hallucinations. Just now, yes. Now, the hallucination has become a provocation. And how do you consider this son? Shame came about. It's an open secret, people. Even the fool in the street knows about it. Only hypocrites pretend not to understand. Oh, look, a fireman here. There's going to be some big changes made. You're not going to get away with it as easily as this. That doesn't mean anything, Mr. Botar. The rhinoceros exists, and We're that's that. Aware. That's all there is to it. I hold the key to all these happenings. <laughs> An infallible system of interpretation. I want you all back in the office this afternoon. <laughs> Too bad about the office, Miss Papillon. I don't know what the management will say. These are exceptional circumstances. They can't make us come back this way. We'll have to wait till the staircase has been repaired. If anyone breaks a leg, it'll be the management's responsibility. That's true. Uh, after you, Miss Daisy. Come on, Miss. Goodbye, Daisy. Uh, goodbye. See you soon, everyone. Miss Daisy, telephone me tomorrow morning. You can type up the letters in my office. Mr. Baron J, I draw your attention to the fact that we are not on holiday, and work will resume as soon as possible. Hear what I say, everyone? Of course, Chief. 
I go on exploiting us till we drop, of course. Who's next? <laughs> go on. After you, Chief. After you, Miss Papillon. Bring me Miss Daisy's letters. There, on the desk. Come on, hurry up. We ain't got all day. We got other goals to make. Be careful with the papers. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Chief. Goodbye, Miss Papillon. Careful with the documents. The door locked up the offices. Don't you worry about it, Chief. After you, Mr. Botar. <coughs> I. I'm about to descend, gentlemen, and I'm going to take up this matter immediately with the proper authorities. I'll get to the bottom of this so-called mystery. I thought it was all perfectly clear to you. Your irony doesn't affect me. What I'm after are the proofs and the documents. Yes, proof positive of your treason. That's absurd. Your insult? You were insulting me. I don't insult. I merely proof. Come on, man! <laughs> what are you doing this afternoon? Showing me for a drink? I'm sorry, I can't. I'm going to take advantage of this afternoon off to go see my friend John. We got into an argument. It was my fault. Uh, after you. Oh, no, after you. No, no, please. After you. After you. No, after you. No, after you, after you. Hurry up! No, I insist after you, after you. <laughs> Sit down. You know, Jean, it was stupid of me to get so upset yesterday over a thing like that. Uh, a thing like what? Yesterday. When yesterday? Where yesterday? Don't you remember it was about the wretched rhinoceros? What rhinoceros? The rhinoceros, or rather, uh, the two rhinoceroses? Oh, yes, I remember. But how do you know they were wretched? Oh, I was just saying that. Oh, well, let's not talk any more about it. That's very kind. And that's that. Uh, but I would like to say how sorry I am for being so insistent, and so obstinate, and getting so angry. In fact, 
I acted stupidly. Well, that's not surprising with you. I'm very sorry. I don't feel very well. That's probably why you're in bed. You know, Jean, as things turned out, we were both right. What about? About, well, you know, uh, this same thing. Sorry to bring it up again, but I'll only mention it briefly. I just wanted you to know that in our different ways, we were both right. It's been proven. There are some rhinoceroses in town with one horn and some with two. That's what I told you. Well, that's just too bad. Yes, too bad. Or maybe it's all to the good. It depends. Uh, in the final analysis, it doesn't much matter which comes from where. The important thing is... I that don't I feel well. I don't feel well at all. Oh, I'm sorry. What do you think it is? I don't know exactly. There's something wrong somewhere. Do you feel weak? On the contrary, I feel full of beans. I meant just a passing weakness. It happens to everybody. It never happens to me. Perhaps you're too healthy then. Too much energy can be a bad thing. It unsettles the nervous system. My nervous system is in perfect order. I'm sound in mind and limb. I come from a long line of- I know that. Perhaps you've just caught the chill. Have you got a temperature? I don't know. Yes, probably I have a touch of fever. My head aches. Just a slight migraine. Would you like me to leave you alone? No, stay. You don't worry me. Your voice is hoarse, too. Hoarse? A bit hoarse, yes. That, that's why I didn't recognize it. Why should I be hoarse? My voice hasn't changed. It's yours that's changed. Mine? Why not? It's possible I hadn't noticed. I sometimes wonder if you're capable of noticing anything. Actually, it's my forehead that hurts. I must have given it a knock. When did you do that? I don't know. I don't remember it happening. But it must have hurt you. It must have happened while I was asleep. The shock would have woken up. You must have only dreamed you knocked yourself. I never dream. Well, your headache must have come on while you were asleep. You've forgotten you dreamed, or rather, you only remember subconsciously. Subconsciously? Me? I master my own thoughts. My mind doesn't wander. I always think straight. I know that. I haven't made myself clear. Then make yourself clear. And you needn't make any, any of your unpleasant observations to me. One often has the impression one has not oneself when one has a headache. If you'd have really not yourself, you'd have a bump. Oh, you've got one. You do have a bump, in fact. A bump? Just a small one. Where? There. It starts just above your nose. I've got no bump. We've never had bumps in my family. Have you got a mirror? That's the limit! Oh, I can feel something. I'm gonna have a look in the bathroom. So it's true, I have got a bump. So you see, I did knock myself. You don't look well, your skin is quite green. You seem to delight in saying disagreeable things to me. Have you taken a look at yourself lately? Forgive me, I didn't mean to upset you. That's hard to believe. Does your throat hurt? If your throat hurts, perhaps you've got a touch of strep. Why should I have a touch of strep? Uh, let me feel your pulse. Oh, it'll pass. Your pulse is normal. You needn't get alarmed. I'm not alarmed in the slightest. Why should I be? You're right. A few days rest will put you right. You've got no time to rest. I must go and buy food. There's not much the matter with you if you're hungry. But even so, you ought to take a few days rest. <clears throat> Has the doctor been to see you? I don't need a doctor. But you shouldn't reject medical advice. You're not going to get the doctor because I don't want the doctor. I can take care of myself. You shouldn't reject medical advice. Doctors invent illnesses that don't exist. Perhaps they do, but they do in good faith, just for the pleasure of looking after people. They invent illnesses. They invent them, I tell you. But after they invent them, they cure them. I only have confidence in veterinary surgeons. There. <laughs> Your veins look swollen. They're jutting out. What do you think you're doing? It's a sign of virility. Of course it's a sign of health and strength, but... What do you think you're doing? Scrutinizing me as if, as if it was some strange animal? It's just your skin. What's my skin got to do with you? I don't go on about your skin, do I? It's just that it's changing color all the time. It's going green. It's hardening as well. Stop mauling me! You're getting on my nerves! Perhaps it's more serious than I thought. I'm going to get the doctor. Leave that thing alone. You mind your own business. 
All right, it was for your own good. I know better than you what's good for me. Your breathing's very hard. One breathes as best one can. You don't like the way I breathe? I don't like the way you breathe. <laughs> your breathing's too feeble. It's as if you're going to drop dead at any moment. Don't say things like that to me, John. You know very well I'm your friend. There's no such thing as friendship. I don't believe in your friendship. Th that's a very hurtful thing to say. There's nothing to get hurt about. But my dear Jean. I'm not your dear Jean. You're certainly in a very misanthropic mood today. Yes, I am misanthropic. Very misanthropic indeed. I like being misanthropic. You're probably still angry with me over our quarrel. I admit it was my fault. That's why I came to say I was sorry. What quarrel are you talking about? I told you just now about the rhinoceros. It's not that I hate people. I'm just indifferent to them. Or rather, they disgust me. And they better keep out of my way or I'll run them down. John, you know very well I shall never stand in your way. I've got one aim in life, and I'm making straight for it. I'm sure you do, but I feel like you're passing through a moral crisis. I feel uncomfortable in my clothes. Whatever's the matter with your skin? Can't you leave my skin alone? I certainly wouldn't want to change it for yours. It's gone like leather. That makes it more solid. It's weatherproof. You're turning it greener and greener. You got color mania today. What did you say? I didn't say anything. I just went because I felt like it. <laughs> Do you know what happened to Buff? He's turned into a rhinoceros. What happened to Buff? He's turned into a rhinoceros. Come on, stop joking. I can talk if I want to. I have every right. I'm in my own house. I didn't say you couldn't. And I wouldn't if I were you. I feel hot. Hot! Just a moment, I must cool myself down. He must have a fever. He's got the chills. I'm going to phone the doctor. So old Buff turned into rhinoceros, did he? <laughs> he played a joke on you. He just disguised himself. He was just disguised. He seemed very serious about it, I assure you. Oh, well, that's his business. I'm sure he didn't do it on purpose. He, he didn't want to change. How do you know? Well, everything led one to suppose so. And what if he did it on purpose, huh? What if he did it on purpose? Well, I'd be surprised at any rate. Mrs. Buff didn't seem to know about it. Mrs. Buff? She's just an idiot. <laughs> well, idiot or not. Buff never let his wife know what he was up to. Uh, you're wrong there, John. It was a very united family. Very united, aren't they? Are you sure? <laughs> yes, very united. And the proof is that... Buff had a secret side deep down which he kept to himself. He never let anyone know what he was up to. Uh, I shouldn't make you talk. It only seems to upset you. On the contrary. It relaxes me. But, but let me call the doctor, I beg you. I absolutely forbid it. I can't bear obstinate people. Well, whether he changed into rhinoceros on purpose or against his will, it's probably all the better for it. How could you say a thing like that? Surely you don't think you that- You always see the black side of everything. It obviously gave him great pleasure to change into rhinoceros. There's nothing extraordinary in that. There's nothing extraordinary in it, but, but I doubt if it gave him much pleasure. And why not, Craig? Well, it's hard to say exactly why. It's just something you feel. I tell you, it's not as bad as all that. After all, rhinoceroses are living creatures the same as us. They've got as much right to life as we have. As long as they don't destroy our lives in the process. So you must admit the difference in mentality. Are you under the impression that our way of life is superior to theirs? Well, at any rate, we have our own moral standards, which I consider incompatible with the standards of these animals. Moral standards? Moral standards? I'm sick of moral standards! We need to go beyond moral standards! What would you put in their place? Nature! <laughs> nature? Nature has its own laws. Morality is against nature. Are you suggesting we replace our moral laws with the laws of the jungle? It would suit me. Suit me fine. <laughs> you, you say that, but deep down, no one. We need to build our lives on new foundations. We must get back to primeval integrity. I don't agree with the word of that. I can't breathe. Just think a moment. You must admit that we have a philosophy that animals don't share, and an irreplaceable set of values which has taken centuries of human civilization to build up. When we've got past all that, We'll be better off. Uh, I know you don't believe that. You're just joking. It's just poetic fancy. 
I never realized you were a poet. I know that you don't believe that fundamentally. I know you too well. You know as well as I do that mankind... Don't talk to me about mankind! I meant the human individual. Uh, humanism. Humanism? All washed up. You're a ridiculous old sentimentalist. But you must admit that the mind... Just cliches. You're talking rubbish. Rubbish? Utter rubbish. I, you, you're not yourself, Sean. Oh, you must really be out of your mind. Uh, you wouldn't want to be a rhinoceros yourself, now would you? Why not? I'm not a victim of prejudice like you. What did you say? I didn't catch what you said. You swallowed your words. And keep your ears open. What? I said then keep your ears open. What's wrong with being a rhinoceros? I'm all for change. It's not like you to say a thing like that, John. Oh, you must really be out of your mind. You're not yourself. I can hardly recognize you anymore. I feel hot. Hot. Demolish everything! You're not yourself. Uh, you're generally so modest. Demolish everything. Demolish everything! Look at me. Can't you see me any longer? Can't you hear me? I can hear you perfectly well. I can see you perfectly well! Well, Jack! I'm sorry. I shouldn't leave him in such a state. He is my friend, after all. I'm going to phone the doctor. No! Calm down, John. You're being ridiculous. Oh. You're a rhinoceros. I'll trample you. I'll trample you down! He, he's a rhinoceros! Oh, he's a rhinoceros! I would never have thought of him! There's rhinoceros in the building! Get the police! There's rhinoceros in the building! How do I get out of here? There's rhinoceros in the building! No. 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 Watch out for the horns! What is it? Struck by to see you, Berger. Who is it? It's me. Who's me? Me, Dudar. It's you. Come in. I hope I'm not disturbing you. The door's locked. Oh, uh, just a moment. Sorry, I didn't recognize your voice. Uh, yes, yes, I, I think I'm a bit better. My voice hasn't changed at all. I recognized yours easily enough. I'm sorry, I thought that... You're right. Your voice is quite normal. Mine hasn't changed either, has it? Why should it have? I'm not a bit, a bit hoarse, am I? Not that I can tell. That's good, that's very reassuring. But well, why? No. What's the matter with you? I don't know. Does one ever know? Have you caught cold as well? I hope not. I, I sincerely hope not. But do sit down, Dar. Take a seat. Are you still feeling a bit off color? Is your head still bad? Oh, yes. I've got a headache. Oh, but there's no bump. I haven't knocked myself, have I? Well, there's no bump as far as I can see. That's, I hope there never will be. Never. If you don't knock yourself, why should there be? If you really don't want to knock yourself, you don't. 
Obviously, but why? What's the matter with you? You seem all nervous and agitated. It must be your migraine. Migraine? I don't want to talk about my migraine. Well, it's understandable that you've got a migraine after all of that emotion. I just can't get used to it. Then it's no surprise you've got a headache. There's nothing there. You know, it can all start from something like that. What can all start? Frightened of coming something else. Calm yourself now and sit down. Dashing up and down the room like that can only make you more nervous. You're right. I must try to keep calm. I just can't get used to it, you know? That Jean, you mean? Oh. I know. Yes, Jean, of course, and the others, too. I realize it must have come as a shock to you. Well, that's not surprising, you must admit. I suppose so. We mustn't dramatize the situation. It's really no reason for I you wonder to... how you'd have felt. Jean was my best friend. Then to watch him change before my eyes, and the way he got so furious. I know. You felt let down. I understand. Try and not think about it. How can I help thinking about it? He was such a warm-hearted person. Who'd have thought of him? We'd known each other for years. He was the last person I'd have expected to change like that. And then to do that to me? I'm sure he didn't do it especially to annoy you. It seemed as if he did. If you'd seen the state he was in, the expression on his face. It's just that you happened to be there at the time. It would have been the same no matter who was there. But after all our years together, he might have controlled himself in front of me. You think that everything revolves around you. You think that everything that happens concerns you personally. You're not the center of the universe, you know. You're right. I know. I must try to readjust myself. Uh, but the phenomenon in itself is so disturbing. It's absolutely shattered me. What can be the reason for it? Up to now, I haven't found a satisfactory explanation. I observe the facts and I digest them. Perhaps he felt the urge for the country, the wide open spaces, fresh air. Perhaps he felt the need to relax. I understand what you mean. At least I'm trying to. Why well, get upset over a few cases of rhinoceritis? Perhaps it's just another disease. Exactly, and I'm frightened of catching it. Stop thinking about it. Really, you attach too much importance to the whole business. John's case isn't symptomatic. He was far too excitable, a bit wild and eccentric. You mustn't base your judgment on the exceptions. You're right. He must have been temporarily unbalanced. And yet, he gave reasons for it. He'd obviously given it a lot of thought. And what about Buff, then? Was he mad, too? And what about the others? You can be sure that both and the others didn't do what they did, especially to annoy you. They wouldn't have gone through all that trouble. That's true. That makes sense. It's a reassuring thought. Or perhaps, on the other hand, that makes it all worse. <laughs> there! You hear that? Oh, what did you think? Oh. Really, you're obsessed with them. You're wearing yourself out. I wonder if I really am immune. In any case, it's not fatal. Certain illnesses are good for you. They'll get over it. We'll see. But there's bound to be certain after. They're just temporary. Don't you worry. Are you absolutely certain? I think so. Yes, I suppose so. One really doesn't want to catch the thing, which is, after all, a nervous disease, then you don't catch it. You simply don't catch it. Once you've gotten, once you've gotten over your shock completely, and you can get out for a breath of fresh air, then you'll feel better. We'll see. Go out? I suppose I'll have to. I'm dreading the moment. I'll be bound to meet some of them. What if you do? They don't attack you. If you ignore them, they leave you alone. I walked right along the avenue to get here, and I arrived here safe and sound, didn't I? No trouble at all. Just the sight of them upsets me. It's a nervous thing. I get a tight feeling inside. You've no sense of humor. That's your trouble. None at all. You must learn to be more detached and try and see the funny side of things. I feel responsible for everything that happens. I feel involved. I can't just be indifferent. Judge not, lest you be judged. If you go on worrying about every little thing that happens, you will never be able to go on living. If only it had happened somewhere else, in some other country, and we just read about it on the papers, we could discuss it quietly examine the questions from all points of view, and come to an objective conclusion. But when you're involved yourself, when you find yourself up against the brutal facts, you can't help but feeling directly concerned. The shock is too violent to stay cool and detached. I frankly can't get used to it. Well, I'm surprised too. Or rather, I was. Now, I'm starting to get used to it. 
Your nervous system is better balanced than mine. You're lucky. But don't you agree it's all very unfortunate I didn't that... say that it's a good thing. Just don't get the idea that I'm on the rhinoceros side. There they go again! A whole gang of them! Rushing up and down the streets! I just can't do it! But you must! You must make some fast and you must get over it. This is a situation and you have to accept it. I don't want to accept it. What else are you going to do? What are your plans? I don't know for the moment. I'll... I'll write to the paper. I'll go see the mayor. I don't know if, morally, you have the right to butt in. It's silly to get worked up just because a few people decide to change their skins. They just didn't feel happy in the ones they had. They're free to do what they like. We must attack the evil at the roots. The evil? That's just a phrase. Who knows what is evil and what is good? It's a matter of personal preferences. You're worried about your own skin. That's a truth matter. If our leaders and fellow citizens all think like you, they'll never take any action. You really need to calm down. You're right. I know. Forgive me. Uh, you must have work to do. Uh, did you get my application for sick leave? Yes, that's all in order. In any case, the office hasn't resumed work yet. Haven't they repaired the staircase yet? Well, they're repairing it now. Slow work. It's not easy to find work in these days. And they talk about unemployment. I bet Kathy Hansen on too, please. What's she say about it? Um, we haven't got a chief anymore. Papi Ons resigned. It's not possible. It's true, I assure you. Well, I'm amazed. Was it on account of the staircase? I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, that wasn't the reason she gave. What was it then? What's gone into her? She's retiring to the country. She's not the age. She might have still become the director. She's given it all up, said she uh, needed a rest. They'll have to replace her. All your degrees will come in useful. You stand a good chance. I suppose I might as well tell you. It's really rather funny. <laughs> the fact is, she's, um, she's turned into a rhinoceros. A rhinoceros? Pat Young? A rhinoceros? I, I don't believe it. I don't find that funny at all. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Well, you know you've no sense of I didn't want to tell you because I knew very well it would just upset you, and you wouldn't be able to see the funny side of things. That's awful. Happy on and she had such a good job. That just proves her metamorphosis was sincere. She must have just been pretending. Uh, she let herself get talked into it. That could happen to anybody. It couldn't happen to, to you, could it? And uh, not to me. We must hope not. Because we don't want to change. That is so, isn't it? Tell me yes. that is. Yes, of course. I bet Botar's taken a very poor view of it. Uh, what's he think of his chief's behavior? Botar was quite indignant. Absolutely outraged. I've rarely seen anyone so incensed. Oh, well, for once I'm on his side. I'm in complete agreement with him. I deplore Pat Mion's actions. Uh, she had a duty not to succumb. How intolerant you are. Uh, you're too tolerant. Far too broad-minded. My dear Berger. One must always make an effort to understand. And in order to understand a phenomenon and its effects, one must work back to the initial cause by honest intellectual effort. We are, after all, thinking things. One has to keep an open mind. That is essential to scientific mentality. Everything is logical. You'll be siding with the rhinoceroses before long. No, 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 not at all. I wouldn't go that far. I'm simply trying to look the facts unemotionally in the face. I'm trying to be realistic. I also contend that there's no real evil in what occurs naturally. And you consider all this natural? <laughs> what could be more natural than a rhinoceros? Yes, but for a man to turn into a rhinoceros is abnormal beyond question. Well, of course, that's a matter of opinion. It's beyond question, absolutely beyond question. You seem very sure of yourself. But who can say where the normal stops and the abnormal begins? Can you personally define these conceptions of normality and abnormality? Nobody has solved these problems. 
Either medically or philosophically. You ought to know that. The problem may not be resolved philosophically, but in practice it's simple. They may prove there's no such thing as movement, and then you start walking. And as you go on walking, you say to yourself like Galileo, e per se muove, and yet it moves. Don't get things all mixed up. In Galileo's case, it was the opposite. Scientific thought and theory proving superior to mass opinion and dogmatism. What's all that mean? Mass opinion, dogmatism, uh, they're just words. I might be mixing things up in my head, but you're losing yours. You don't know what's normal and what isn't anymore. I couldn't care less about Galileo. I don't give a damn about Galileo. You're the one that brought him up in the first place and raised the whole question. Saying practice always has the last word. Maybe it does, but only when it precedes the theory. The history of scientific thought and theory proves that. It doesn't prove anything of the sort. It's all gibberish, utter lunacy. There again, we need to define exactly what we understand by lunacy. Uh, lunacy is lunacy, and that's all there is to it. Everybody knows what lunacy is. And what about the rhinoceroses? Are they practice or are they theory? Both. How do you mean both? Both one and the other, or one or the other. It's a debatable point. In that case, I refuse to think about it. There is no need to get so heated up. Our opinions may not exactly coincide, but we can still discuss the matter peaceably. These things ought to be discussed. You think I'm getting all heated up, do you? Ugh. I might be Jean. No, no, I don't want to become like him. I'm not very good in philosophy. You've got all sorts of degrees. That's why you're so at ease in discussion where I never know what to say, I'm so clumsy. But I do feel you're in the wrong. I feel it instinctively. You know, it's the rhinoceros that has instinct. I feel it intuitively. Yes, that's the word, intuitively. What exactly do you understand by intuitively? Intuitively means, well, uh, just like that. I feel it just like that. I think your excessive tolerance and generous indulgence, believe me, they're only weaknesses, blind spots. You're innocent that. enough to think that. You'll always be able to dance rings around me. Morning, Mr. Dar. Oh, it's you, Daisy. Well, how kind of you to stop by. How very kind. It certainly is. Are you feeling any better now, Mr. Berenger? I've got a headache. Isn't it frightful? I think you want to be resting. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Oh, why should you be? Wouldn't want to be in the way, you know. <clears throat> I've got news for you both. Botar is a rhinoceros. Well, well. It's not possible. He was against it. You must be mistaken. He protested. Isn't that so, Hudar? That is so. I know he protested, but that didn't stop him from turning. Well, he must have changed his mind. Everybody has the right to do that. He must have been lying. He was just pretending. I saw him do it. Uh, well, did he give any reasons for it? Yes, what he said was, We must vote with the times. <laughs> Those were his last human words. <laughs> Move with the times. What a mentality. But now that I think about it, Botar's behavior is not very surprising. His firmness was only opposed. He had a lot of resentment. He hated his superiors, and he had an inferiority complex. No, no, that's not it at all. The example he followed was the chiefs, the very instrument of the people who exploited him, as he used to say. No. With him, it was a case of community spirit triumphing over his anarchic impulses. It's the rhinoceroses who are anarchic, because they're in the minority. The arts. True for the moment. Well, for the moment, let's have lunch. Oh, oh, you brought food. You're very kind. Very kind indeed. I don't know how to thank you. Will you be staying with us, Dudar? I really wouldn't want to be in the way. Nonsense. You know, we'd love to have you stay. Don't want to be a nuisance. Yeah, yes, of course. Stay, Dudar. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. You know, I had a lot of trouble finding food. All of the shops have been demolished. They just devour everything. They should all be rounded up in a big enclosure. That's easier said than done. The Animal Protection League would never allow it. And besides, everyone has a close relative or friend among them. So everybody's mixed up in it. Everybody's in the same boat. Yes, but how can people be rhinoceroses? I just can't get used to it. I'm setting the table for three, all right? She, of course she's staying. You do get used to it, you know. Nobody seems surprised to see herds of rhinoceroses galloping through the street anymore. 
They just stand aside and carry on as if nothing had happened. That's the wisest course to take. I just can't get used to it. Wonder if one oughtn't to give me a try. Well, <laughs> for the moment, let's have lunch. You will be staying with us. I'm really not feeling very hungry. To be frank, I don't like candy very much. I feel like eating outside on the grass. You mustn't do that. Think of the risk. Really, I don't want to be a nuisance. But we've already... No, really, I mean... If you really don't want to stay, we can't force you. I didn't even offend you. Uh, man is superior to the rhinoceros. I didn't say he wasn't. But I'm not with you entirely either. Well, I don't know. Only experience can tell. You're weakening too, Tudara. It's just a passing phase which you'll regret. But if it's just a passing phase, then there's no great danger. I feel certain scruples. I feel it's my duty to stick by my employers and my friends, through thick and thin. We shall miss you, Tudara, but there is nothing that we can do about it. It's my duty. I have to do my duty. No, your duty is to oppose them with a firm, clear mind. I shall keep my mind clear, as clear as ever it was. But if you're going to criticize, it's best to do so from the inside. I can't abandon them. I won't abandon them. Oh, she's very good-hearted. She's too good-hearted. Uh, you're too good-hearted. Uh, don't let her go. Oh, she's making a mistake. What can I do about it? Come back, Dudar. Uh, we're fine of you. Don't go. It's too late. <laughs> there was nothing that you could do. She's joined up with them. Where is she? With them. Which one is she? You can't tell. You can't really recognize her anymore. They all look alike. All look alike. You should have held her back by force. I didn't dare to. You can see nothing but them on the street. Nothing but them. Not a single human being as far as the eye can see. They're all over the street. You don't feel let down, Daisy, do you? No, no. I want so much to be a comfort for you, Daisy. I love you. Don't ever leave me. Oh, shut the window, darling. You're making such an awful noise and raising the dust. Everything will get filthy. I won't have any fears as long as we're together. You know, Daisy, I never thought I'd be able to fall in love again. Oh, well, you see, anything is possible. I, I want so much to make you happy. Do you think you can be happy with me? Why not? If you're happy, then I'll be happy too. My love, my dear love, I never thought I'd be able to feel such tremendous emotion. Oh, you must be more sure and more calm of yourself. I am. Come, sit down. There was no point in Dudar quarreling with Botar as things turned out. Stop thinking about Dudar. I'm here with you. We have no right to interfere in other people's lives. But, but you're interfering with mine. You know how to be firm with me. You have to fight for happiness, don't you agree? I adore you, Daisy. I admire you as well. Maybe you won't say that when you get to know me better. The more I know you, the better you seem. And you're so beautiful. So very beautiful. Especially compared to them. I know that, I know that probably seems like no compliment, but, but they make you seem more beautiful than ever. How's your head feeling now? Much better, darling. Oh, let's take it off. Oh, no, don't touch it. Nonsense. It doesn't suit you. I'm frightened there might be something underneath. There's nothing there. Your forehead's as smooth as a baby's. You're right. You're getting rid of my complexes. What should I do with that one? I'll never leave you alone again. I won't have any fears as long as we're together. I'll keep them all at bay. We'll read books together. I'll become clever. Oh, and when there aren't so many people about, we can go for a long walk. Yes, along the Seine, and in the Luxembourg Gardens. And to the zoo. I'll become brave and strong. I'll keep you safe from harm. You don't need to defend me, silly. We don't wish anybody any harm, and no one wishes us any. Sometimes one does harm without meaning to. I will never forgive myself for not being nicer to Jean. Stop worrying about it. You did all you could. You must get away with all these bad memories. But they're very real memories. They keep coming back to me. I never knew you were such a realist. I thought you were more poetic. Where's your sense of imagination? There are many sides to reality. Choose the one that's best for you and escape into the world of the imagination. It's easy to say that. Aren't I enough for you? Of course, more than enough. Well, then we have the right to live. We even owe ourselves a duty to be happy. Guilt is a dangerous symptom. It shows a lack of purity. You're right. A lot of them started like that. It can lead to that. You must try and not feel guilty anymore. 
How right you are, my wonderful love. You, all my happiness, the light of my life. We are together, aren't we? No one has the right to stop us from being happy. In fact, nobody could. Could they? What is that? Who could that be? Don't answer. Why not? I don't know. I just feel it's better not to. It might be Jean or Dudar ringing to say they've had second thoughts. They wouldn't have changed their minds so quickly. Perhaps the authorities have decided to take action at last. I'd be very surprised if it was them. Hello? <laughs> what is that? You hear that? <laughs> You're playing jokes now. Jokes in bad taste. You see, you see, what did I tell you? You didn't tell me anything. I was expecting that. It was just what I predicted. <laughs> you did not predict anything. Oh. You can only predict things after they've already happened. Oh, yes, I can predict things all right. <sighs> They're not being very nice. In fact, it's downright nasty. I don't like being made fun of. They wouldn't dare make fun of you. It's me they're making fun of. They're taking the revenge, but what have we done to them? Pull the plug out! The telephone authorities say you must Oh, You never dared to do anything! And you think you could defend me? Let's turn on the radio for the news. Oh, yes, you must not have me stand. What is that? What's going on? Oh, they're taking over the radio stations! He called. Joke any longer, they mean business. There's nobody but them left now. Nobody but them. Not a soul left anywhere. We're left all alone. Left all alone. That's what you wanted? You mean that's what you wanted? It was you. You. Oh. I'll chase all your fears away. Perhaps it's all our own fault. You mustn't think like that. We, mu we mustn't start feeling remorse. It's dangerous to start feeling guilty. We must just live our lives and be happy. We have the right to be happy. They're not spiteful, and we're not doing them any harm. You just sit down and keep calm. Uh, they'll get over it, you'll see. It's just a passing it's phase. It's just a passing phase. It's for good. I love you, Daisy. I love you madly. You keep saying the same things, my dear. Do you feel sure of my love? Yes, of course. I, I love you so. Listen, Daisy, there is something we can do. We'll have children, and our children will have children. It'll take some time, but together we can regenerate the human race. <laughs> regenerate the human race? It happened once before. <laughs> Ages ago, Adam and Eve, they had a lot of courage. And we can have courage too. It doesn't take all that much. It happens automatically with time and patience. I don't want to have children. Such a bore. How, how can we save the world if we don't? Why bother to save it? What a thing to save, Daisy. Let's save the world. Perhaps it's we who need saving. Perhaps we're the abnormal ones. Daisy, you're not yourself. You've got a touch of fever. Oh, those are the real people. They look happy. They're content to be what they are. They were right to do what they did. Daisy, we're the ones doing right, I assure you. Oh, that is very presumptuous of you. Daisy, you know perfectly well I'm right. There's no such thing as absolute right. The world is right, not you and me. Daisy, I am right, and the proof is that you understand me when I speak to you. What does that prove? The, the proof is that I love you as much as it's possible for a man to love a woman. Funny sort of argument. Daisy, I, I can't understand you any longer. Think of our, our love, our love. I feel a bit ashamed of what you call love. This morbid feeling and this male weakness. It just doesn't compare with the ardor and the tremendous energy emanating from the creatures around us. Now you're talking stupid. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what came over me. Forgive me. It's because you've run out of arguments. That's why. In the space of a few minutes, we've gone through 25 years of married life. <laughs> <laughs> I pity you. I understand you all too well. You're probably right that I ran out of arguments. You think they're stronger than me? Stronger than us? Maybe they are. Indeed they are. Well, in spite of it all, I swear I'll never give in. 
And never. Oh, my poor darling. I'll help you to resist to the very end. Will you be capable of it? Oh, of course. I give you my word. Oh, listen! They're singing. They're not singing. They're roaring. They're singing. They're roaring, I tell you. You're mad. They're singing. You mustn't have a very musical ear. You don't know the first thing about music. They're beautiful. They're disgusting. Oh, you mustn't say unpleasant things about them. I'm sorry. I can, I'm not going to quarrel on their account. Oh, they're like gods. You go too far, Daisy. Take a good look at them. You needn't be jealous. I can see that our opinions are directly opposed. It's better not to discuss the matter. You needn't be so nasty. If you don't be so stupid. <laughs> It's no longer possible for us to live together. He's not very nice. Really, he's just not very nice. Daisy? Daisy? Come back. And we haven't even had the lunch yet. Uh, it was obvious that we weren't getting along together. The home was divided up. But she shouldn't have left me like that without any notice. That's no way to behave. Now I'm left all alone. I'm not joining up with you. I'm staying the way I am. I can't understand you. I'm a human being. A human being. 